Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. This time we're looking at an older replay. This is from the 9.2 patch, but it's still relevant for a variety of reasons. We are going to be watching Schmalklaus playing in his Leopard 1. This is the Tier 10 German medium tank. Well, of course, there are two. This one is the, the faster, well, at least more agile variant compared to the E50M. It also has a, a better performing gun, but it sacrifices pretty much all armor capabilities outside of, you know, getting a, a lucky bounce off the, the angle of the front or an absorption, maybe in this, this kind of semi-mantlet of the turret. Is it worth it? Well, for a lot of playstyles it is, especially in patch 9.2 as this vehicle was substantially buffed with regards to its rate of fire. Its rate of fire went up to I think 6.9 rounds a minute. So, this replay from 9.2 by Schmalklaus, he would have definitely been making use of that as we're going to see. Now, for starting positions, when you're playing on um, Bokorovka, um, for this rendition, it'd be Fiery Salient. There are three locations that you could really go to in a, in a fast tank, such as the Leopard. One would be the bush, the bushes in either E or F1. And if you go there, that's quite aggressive. If one of the enemy light tanks does get a peek at you, or one of the enemy light tanks decides to try and do the same thing, because these bushes are approachable from both uh, the north base and the south base, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And when I say a lot of trouble, probably about half the time you're going to lose most of your hit points, and some of the time you're even going to die outright. Schmal Klaus went forwards into the bushes, and then he pulls back behind the bushes, where they're no longer transparent, and begins to unload on his opponents, putting in three precise shots, albeit into tier 8 tanks, doing 1,200. Make that 1,644 damage very, very quickly indeed. Now, Schmalklaus does have six cents on his leopard, so when he's spotted, you'll know about it. Absolute precision this gun. This 105mm, one of the most accurate in the game, with ultra high penetration. I think it's 268. Yes, it is. 268mm of penetration can go through pretty much anything. Now, he is not spotting these vehicles, because if he were spotting these vehicles, then they would be able to see him. One of his, one of his friends is catching a glimpse, but obviously when he goes forwards into the bushes, when bushes become transparent, you can see through them as if they were not there. However, the enemy still can't see through those bushes when they're transparent for you. Unless you fire. And then you lower your camera rating substantially. It'll be probably about 10% of what it is. And so you will get spotted. However, if you do what Schmalklaus is doing and pull back behind the bush until it's no longer transparent, and then fire, then you significantly lower the enemy's chances of spotting you, if at all. So, I was talking about the three starting locations that you could use in the Leopard. So these bushes here are probably the most aggressive play. It will allow you to light up the whole of the enemy uh, the flank down the west, and that can quite get you a huge amount of spotting damage and halt the enemy's advance, which can be very useful for your team. Schmalklaus connects a lovely shot there into the Jagdpanzer E100's lower plate. That's the third penetration on that tier 10 German tank destroyer, totaling 1,160 damage, which is pretty much average for this gun. Spread across three shots. Oh, that one. That was, that was unusual. With the amount that he aimed at the target there and the accuracy of this gun, I would usually expect that one to penetrate. Well, at least hit the target. And if it's going to hit the side of a T28 prototype, it's likely to go in. He fires a few shots blind, and then pushes forwards again. And as soon as the bushes become transparent, he can see through the bush. Then he pulls back behind the bush, so it's no longer transparent, and he can take shots at the enemy team. And that's how you can do it. Basically, this is spotting 101 for all of you guys out there who didn't know about it. You can shoot through bushes when they're not transparent, and you're very likely to not get spotted, but you can only see through them when you're within, I think, 10 meters or so of them. Now, the T110E3 
even the leopard with 260 millimeters of penetration is unable to really contest the T1 1023 from this angle. And that's because the weak points of that vehicle will be the lower plate. And unless Schmalklaus wants to probably load heat and try and shoot into the top of the machine gun port, he's unlikely to go through it. Again, more textbook display of using bushes. This is a, a bushwork masterclass for all of you. And remember, fallen trees do count as camo. He goes forwards, spots the targets, pulls back behind them, and unloads. And he doesn't get spotted. That one was definitely a penetration, as we can see. Jagdpanzer E100 dies. And the Jagdpanzer E100 on the enemy team calls Schmalklaus a hacker. Now he's not hacking, he just knows how to use the game mechanics very well. And he's outplaying you very, very, very hard, Mr. Jagdpanzer E100. I'm sorry about that. So the side of the T1 1023 is garbage. Nice, easy shot. However, even the lower plate is challenging for Schmalklaus's 105mm. And so he decides that he needs that extra little bit of clout and he fires, well, he loads his first heat round of the game. 330 millimeters of penetration on the heat round. Which will be more than enough to go through the lower plate of the E3. He fires one blind and reloads, ready to fire another one in. It flies too high and even 330 millimeters of penetration cannot go through the upper plate of a T1 to an E3 from this angle. He goes forwards, spots the T34. Pulls back, decides not to shoot at the T-34, aims at the T-110 E3, but then goes back to focus. Respots him. He's not going to pull back behind the bush for this shot, though. He's going to reveal his position. Now, this is a perfect example. Because the bush was transparent when he fired, he's not getting the full camera rating from it when he fires. And so he gets spotted. But it doesn't matter because of the fantastic rate of fire on this gun. Now, we're halfway through this game. Schmalklaus has done 6,200 damage and picked up four kills. Yet his team is still behind by three tanks. Schmalklaus has thinned out the enemy's numbers. Auto aims the STA-1 down on the move. What a lovely shot that was. And pre-aims the SU-14-2. Realizes that he's wasting his time trying to find a shot on the SU-14-2 there. And he's running out of time. Even with all the kills that he's putting in, his team are still behind. He needs to be aggressive to take that artillery out the game fast to then have a chance to outflank his opponents. Now the SU-14-2 is not aiming at him. Comes down, rolls slightly high, 410, which is slightly higher than the 390 average. But he would have been able to take him out easily anyway. Now he has a shot into the side of the Jagdpanzer E100. Or maybe he doesn't. Malklaus feels like he'll be wasting his time there. And his team now finally pull ahead. But oh dear, the situation just changes as the Centurion 7-1 shuts down the IS-3. The Jagdpanzer E100 has spotted Schmalklaus. But thankfully, the Leopard 1 is very fast indeed. And so really, Schmalklaus had two opportunities here. One, he could have tried to flank around and shoot these guys in the side from this position. Or two, he goes back up onto the hill. I think he's making the right choice here. Why? Because we haven't seen the Panther 2 yet. And if the Panther 2 spots him, then the Centurion 7-1 might be able to get some shots into him from the ridgeline and even shave off a lot of his hit points. So he spots the Jagdpanzer E100 and bounces off the spaced armor of the side of the tank. The Jagdpanzer E100 does not spot him. Schmalklaus must have incredible camo rating. A lovely shot there, able to penetrate the lower plate of the E100 Jagdpanzer, even though it's angled for him, and he's aiming down on it, showing you just how much of a, a weak point that vehicle is. Or highlighting the ultra-high penetration of the Leopard 1. So Schmalklaus takes a lot of heat in this tank, and a lot of HE, but... It's not often that you've had to do 8,000 damage and there are still four tanks remaining on the enemy team. As he proceeds to just pick apart this Jagdpanzer E100. And a little tip there, if an enemy is in a cap circle and you don't know if you've hit the blind shot, obviously if the cap resets, that means you've hit them. 
He knows that. So he fired an extra shot. But when the cap didn't reset on his extra shot, then he knows he's going to be missing, so he stops. So he progresses across the map to try and help his ISU-152 buddy against the Bosch. Nice hit. Taking out that tier 9 French tank destroyer. But he's spotted. He gets hit by the Centurion 7-1 or the Panther 2. We're not sure quite which one it was. And tries to go backwards and forwards to dodge. The real shell that he wants to evade, and that is from the Yagpan Z100. The Yagpan Z100 will remove two-thirds of his remaining hit points. Now, as soon as the bush goes clear, he can see through it. When it goes transparent, now he can't see through it. Now the enemies can't see him when he shoots through it as well. This is just bushwork 101. The key reason really why I wanted to show you this video, as it's one of the hardest outplay mechanics you can do in World of Tanks goes into the bush, it's transparent, he can see through the bush, pulls back behind it, fires, enemies cannot see him because the bush is no longer transparent when he fires through it. Sorry I'm hitting this so hard. But it's just it's, it's just paramount and it's how Schmalklaus has been able to win this game and have a ridiculous round. 9,000 damage and only he's only received one or two hits. And he kills his second Jagdpanzer E100 of the game from stealth. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to uh, ruin the surprise here, really. The Jagdpanzer 2 has disconnected and hasn't made it back into the game. And so Schmalklaus is going to get to feast on an AFK Panther 2. Or maybe he's not AFK. As we're going to see in a couple of seconds, he does actually come back. So it's just unlucky. And he goes down swinging. The poor Panther 2 must have disconnected. And he says in chat, God dang internet at the end of the game. So Schmalklaus, what a fantastic round for you, sir. It was a little disappointing that the Panther 2 had disconnected because I was really looking forward to you having that that one-on-one -on -one, or at least the one-on-two -on fight with your ISU-152 at the end of the game. But you had pretty much all of your hit points intact, well, three quarters of them, when going after the Panther 2. And I know that unless you'd got unlucky and been Amaract twice, considering you had a repair kit with you, you would have taken this guy down fair and square. Nevertheless, we saw over 10,600 damage this game. And we know there are quite a few blind shots that we're also going to have to take into account and see what we can find when we take a quick look at the post-game stats. What an absolutely fantastic game, Schmalkweils. I can't believe this one slipped under my radar. And it was only when I was looking through all of the Leopard 1 replays on the website after having thoroughly enjoyed playing the tank myself recently that I found your gargantuan replay. 141,000 credits and 4,378 experience on closer inspection. That was for some kind of event that was going on, but this was still 2,502 experience with a premium account, i.e. 1,668 base. That is a fantastic round in a tier 10 vehicle. So including all of the damage that Schmalklaus did to those Jagdpanzer E100s amongst other tanks that we didn't see, it was 11,500, and if we take away that 1,500 from the AFK or disconnected Panther 2, this was still over 10,000 damage to active opponents. With Schmalklaus getting the Pools Medal for killing 10, the high caliber for the highest damage in the game, a tank sniper unsurprisingly in the Leopard for dealing a huge amount of damage from at least 300 meters, and defending the Cap Circle, Defender with 95 base defense points. Even with all of the shots that Schmalklaus fired blind, he was still able to hit 41 out of 46, showing just how good the accuracy and the aim time is on the Leopard 1. In fact, apart from having one degree less gun depression than the FE4202 and the M48 pattern, as well as a rate of fire that can't compete with the SDB-1 or the Soviet tier 10 medium tanks, the Leopard is a fantastic sniper of a tank, able to dish out a huge amount of punishment much more quickly than the E50M could. And the only significant drawback of this tank is that it's rather large, it has a very weak ammo rack, and practically no armor. Nevertheless, if you can master bushes as well as Schmalklaus has, then who needs armor, hey? 
Well, at least on Prokhorovka. So, Schmalklaus, thank you so much for sending me this replay. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'd like to give a big thank you to the community for giving it so many likes that it, it, it brought it to my attention and I have no idea how I missed it in the first place. So remember that if you find a replay on the website that you thoroughly enjoy, then do rate it up. It'll become more transparent to me and it'll make it more likely for me to be able to find it and do a commentary on it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Leopard 1 and how it directly competes with the E50M and also with the other tier 10 medium tanks. And what do you think about the buff that it received in patch 9.2? Did it help with how competitive the vehicle is? Or do you prefer uh, a more raw power tank such as the STB-1? Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.